honey, Karen is a whole damn hot mess. Like, all of it. Like, baby. This whole entire season is gonna be nothing but the Huglers. What you think? I am your girl, Talisa Ray. What's up? How you doing, Ray of Sunshines? If it's your first time visiting my channel, what up, though? Go ahead, click that subscribe button to become a Ray of Sunshine. Since you're there already, click the notification bell so you're alerted of all the videos I upload going forward. Yes, I changed my hair between uh, reviews because, honey, that shit was hot and it was out of control and... You can follow me on Instagram because in the next few days, I'm going to get it all together. Anyway, let's just go ahead. We are reviewing season three, episode two of The Real Housewives of Potomac Meet the Press. Hot ass mess, Karen is. Y'all heard me. So when we open up the scene, we see Monique and she's pouring glasses of wine or champagne or something and who rolls up but Miss Karen Hugler herself in a hundred thousand dollar Jaguar sports car? I don't know what kind it is, but baby, I wanted to tell you it took everybody's breath away. My question is, is it rented like that house? <laughs> Y'all, I'm being shady. Nevertheless, when she stepped out of that car in that pink jumpsuit with the stripe, is that an Adidas jumpsuit or is that like? custom made. Y'all, where'd she get that from? Cause from I'm gonna need that. But as they sat and talked, I commend Monique on one thing for sure. She showed true friendship. All she did was sit in silence and support her friend, not asking any questions. Is it true? Is Ray being indicted? Or did you know? She's not asking any questions. She's being supportive. And as she listens and she talks to... Monique about Robin and how she felt betrayed by that batch. Like, I don't even like that. Like, girl, if you don't stop, just say B. Like, what? I, honey, stop. Anyway, we'll talk more about Robin as we go in on other people's scene. So here's a few things that went on with Robin. Well, Giselle goes over to Robin's current townhouse and... Giselle wants to know where y'all moving to. And she's all like down the street in another townhouse that's just a little bit bigger. You know, Giselle's looking like, shit, I didn't want to drive way over here to Hanover in the first place. But because she's my friend, I don't mind. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Okay. They talk about Karen and Robin's lunch. And the, you got to make millions to owe millions, girl. I mean, I tell you, we're going to talk about this all season, but I'm going to be here for it all season, every episode until we get the shit hashed out. They also talk about her and Sherman double dating with Juan and Robin. So, which brings me to Giselle asking Robin what's on the horizon for her and Juan. And she's all like, we're working things out. Child, how long we gonna work things out? Listen, you've already forgiven him for his infidelity. My thing is, if he wanted to get back together, cause listen, you guys would. I mean, you sleeping in the same bed, y'all moving from one place to another. Is it because it's more cost efficient? Is it because you don't have a job or a career of your own to stand on like i'm not sure because any other woman who had such a big deal about the whole infidelity situation um would probably have moved out if we were able to when you're not able to you stick with it and just get a divorce and stay in the house together i, I don't really know how this works like and I'm not going to talk bad about anyone's situation because I would hate to be in the same situation and y'all be looking at me like, really, Talisa Ray? Seriously? <laughs> I digress. So then we let's talk about G Giselle. Giselle gets all dolled up to go out with Sherman. And I'm going to tell you that Giselle and Sherman look so cute and giddy and happy, especially her. She's got that whole... I said it last episode, that whole giddy girl feeling about that whole schoolgirl crush. Like, I really like you. You know, they've been dating for a year, honey. They even had the conversation about blending their families if they move in together. They would be the fucking Brady Bunch, the new version of the Brady Bunch. I don't know if he has all boys. Y'all know what kind of, what his 
children uh, consist of two boys and a girl, two girls and a boy? Let me know down below in the comments because I'm just nosy like that. But she plans this picnic at a winery for them. And it's really cute. I didn't know that you could actually do that. But then again, I live here in California. I'm going to have to look that up so that when I do get Bay, me and Bay can go and have us a picnic on the lawn at the winery. I, I'm wondering. But I loved it. I was here for that whole um, banter between the two of them, especially when he said in the limo, you know, you told me you were a lot and you are. Like, I loved it and I love that he is here for all of it to deal with her with it and that little cute little romp down the vineyard uh bushes honey to go get a little piece honey i was here for it. yes honey lift the skirt up pull the panties to the side get you some she's a freak so then we see ashley let's talk about ashley ashley we see her at um her and michael's restaurant oz and we hear that things are doing well for the restaurant they're finally in the black so that's, or is it in the red? No, it's in the black, right? <laughs> They're really making money now. How about that? Um, so I'm, I'm excited to hear that because money, money woes, money troubles are some of the biggest things that ruin marriages. But really, it's always communication because you didn't communicate about money and you didn't communicate about sex. It's always communication. It always falls back on that. Nevertheless, in this instance, it's money filtered with communication. That's just my theory. So while they're there, she's having, she's having a sip with bliss, a socialite brunch for women to network together. And I actually loved that idea of a networking brunch. Okay. Like women of all different backgrounds or all different careers coming together and to network with one another. I really, really like that a whole bunch of a lot. She invited, most of the people there are people she knew, right? But she also invited only Monique of the girls. She only invited Monique um, because Monique is probably more youthful than the others. How old are they? They gotta be in their 20s, right? But also, this is where we're introduced to Candace, and we'll talk about Candace, who was Miss USA, and Ashley met her through the pageant circuit. So they seem to have a good relationship, a good bond. Um, Candace, right off top, seems a little over the top, but that is that whole, I don't know how to say it without sounding... You know, it's just this whole sing song, whole blah, 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 bubbly personality. Like, I don't, I'm trying not to label what that is, but that's just what it is. Her personality is over the top, bubbly, outgoing from what we see in this little bit of a snip, snippet. But what we do see is that Candace and Monique hit it off very, very well. Monique's all like, I rap. Candace is all like, I sing. Monique is all like, we could do a record. Girl, bye. So then Monique brings up, which I'm not clear as to why. Monique brings up, well, I guess I am because they're all curious as what the fuck Karen is doing. Brings up that Karen rolls up in a $100,000 car to her house and is wondering how she could do that when her husband is being indicted whatever for five million dollars in tax evasion like so she's wondering like aren't you a unit how is that possible i mean but we're all thinking it too but karen is a little bit delusional i keep reminding myself and let's talk about candace briefly because this is her introduction to us and her husband chris that was one of the things that they were all giddy about that my husband's name is chris my fiance's name is chris girl it's a gang of people named chris christopher christian Break it down, it becomes Chris. Anyway, anyway, having things in common is great. But makes me wonder, will this be the kind of relationship, like it seems like it's going to be really... successful. Like they're going to have a booming relationship, but then it ends up being tumultuous. Like, I wonder... 
Did I tell y'all, I haven't told y'all that I think I'm starting to like Monique a little bit better. And I love that she is a natural sister and all you see her in is like braids and stuff. I love that. I really do. But Candace, let's talk about Candace. Well, when I see Candace walk into the bar with her, Chris, I'm all like, okay, interracial couple. It ain't that many of them that we see on these housewives shows. I'm thinking in my mind, like, haven't seen any. Have you seen any? Where? Where? Tell me where, when. And I'm talking about black woman, other man. Black woman, a man of another ethnicity. It is very common to see a black man with an other ethnicity. To each their own. They can love who they want. But it's just, for me, a little breathtaking to see something a little different. You know what I'm saying? That the black woman can entice an other Cause you know how they think we can't like we don't know child but i thought to myself when she said that he has three children by two different women i was like oh okay his soul might be black <laughs> she was like i'm upper echelon he's pretty much not like but they seem to mesh well together and i love me some good raw oysters y'all and to see them having them oysters i was like see Ain't that many black men that's going to have raw oysters with you and sushi with you and really enjoy it and like it as much as you do. And then I did like their little their little banter and how she put her hands in the hole in his pants and was like, oh, is those your balls? And he seems to be a little more prudish than her. He was like, I don't think that that would be acceptable. Where most women probably would have been like, baby, go on and rub them. Whatever, y'all. But here's what we came for. Let's talk about Miss Karen and this press conference. <laughs> Miss Karen calls all the ladies and is like, I'm having a press conference. I'm having a press conference. I'm having a press conference. What? A press conference, child, you having a get together, a meeting where you get to talk about yourself and try and clear the air. At least that's exactly how it came across. And we saw Giselle and Robin together coming, getting together, getting getting ready for the press conference. And Giselle, honey, made the shadiest t-shirts. I couldn't believe those t-shirts she had. Let me read what On the front, it said, hashtag bless, bless the Huglers, right? On the back, it was free Uncle Ben, free Karen, hashtag tax reform. That was a really shady, fucked up shirt. So as Karen was setting up this press conference, uh, she has her assistant, Matt, at least that's how we see him as, but she later introduces him as a friend that they've been friends for 12 years. She should have said my friend and assistant, but they probably would have been like, well, how can you afford an assistant? Bitch, you don't work. Giselle, let us know. You ain't, you ain't working. How you got your own money? I'm all over the place. Nevertheless, it's clean. It's white. Uh, she puts out paper and pencil and then she has these printouts of tweets that Giselle had put on Twitter. The lady started asking her the tough questions. You know, she said she wanted to come there to get the stuff out the air because we're about to find out who's friends and who's foes. You know, Karen, what? Like, actually, they're all genuinely concerned. But by this point, they should be like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you don't wanna share? Fine, don't share. We already know that they don't know how to be supportive without knowing all the information. But because she puts on, she, Karen, puts on all these airs as the grand dame and I'm having all this money and all, you know, everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to knock you off your pedestal. Listen, ladies, you have to be careful how far you sit up because somebody's coming for you or sometimes God is going to knock you down and you have to be humble. Sit down. Be humble. And that's what Karen really needs to do. I'm all over the place. I keep saying that. But listen, so they're in there and they're asking her, is the reason you moved because of this tax problem? She says, no. Okay. Are you being indicted? She says, no. Karen Hugler has her own money. We don't have a shared account, a joint account. We have individual accounts. And um, I don't know which one of them said it in the confessional, but they were like, oh, it was Monique. So what? Either you don't trust him or he doesn't trust you. That was really like a real, like a really good, you know, we really like a real good valid point. 
because you get a shared account when you've been married for as long as they have. It said they got married in 1996. We are in 2018. That's 22 years that they've been married. Holy crap. 2006. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 22 years. And I'm all like, damn, I've been out of, damn. Anyway, but you, did you notice how crazy Karen had become? Monique got to writing down on her paper, you know, what was being said. And she was like, no writing now. How you can control when I'm going to take a note and when I'm not? You put the paper down for me to take notes, but you don't want me to take notes now because I'm trying to get receipts for the shit you say. I want to be able to look back and say, this is what you said, X, Y, and Z. Uh, and then she, like I said, was talking to Giselle about Twitter. And Giselle was like, I retweeted. And even though you might have retweeted the Shade Room's tweet, it may have still been inappropriate as a friend, Miss Giselle. It was very shady, even if it was a retweet. Would y'all agree or no? Last thing I want to say on this situation, Monique made a good point. I'm going to ride for you. I'm going to defend you. When they ask a question, I want to be able to without a doubt say this this and that and not have it come back to me or pop out later that it was something entirely different we just want to know all the facts but if i don't know all the facts i can't ride hard for you i can totally understand her point with that honest to god but like i keep telling y'all you don't have to know all of the all of the details to be supportive. I mean, we want to know all the details, but if I need a friend to talk to or a shoulder to listen, uh, if I need someone to talk to or a shoulder to cry on as my friend, without you saying anything or asking a bunch of questions, people need to learn how to be supportive and just be silent and let information be given. Sometimes you just want somebody to listen and you don't want nobody to say nothing else because we all know that Miss Karen is embarrassed, even if it is her husband who's getting uh, whatever the tax issue is, right? Even though it is her husband in the $5 million tax evasion, it's still embarrassing after saying he's the black Bill Gates. Well, baby, Bill Gates pays his taxes. Bill Gates has his shit together with the IRS. You know, there was one last thing that I thought was kind of funny. They kept cutting to the waiter with the champagne <laughs> and the faces that he was making at the shit that all the ladies were saying, especially Karen and her not knowing anything about the finances. Like, even to him, it seemed ludicrous. It seemed asinine, unreal, impossible that you could be married to someone for 20 plus years and not know shit about the finances. Not know shit. You just sitting in the dark? Is this a cover? I, I, a lot of shit goes through my mind. Anyway, what did you guys think about tonight's episode, Meet the Press? Let me know down below in the comments. I want to thank you so much for watching my review of season three episode to meet the press of the Real Housewives of Potomac. Before you go, don't forget to click that subscribe button and that notification bell. The two go together. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll see you on the next video.